Two people are walking down a forest. When their hands accidentally touch, they quickly pull away and with a sharp, begrudging look on their faces, they apologize. Oh, the air is so thick with tension, with repressed intensity that only lovers are capable of fostering. Does this mean then that these two are lovers? Quarreling? Well, not exactly. Let's go back to a few hours ago. In a restaurant bathroom, best friends Jinguji and Tachibana are talking about the mixer they're currently attending. From the duo's conversation, it's safe to say that Jinguji doesn't have a penchant for women. There are two things he's interested in, fish tanks and taking care of Tachibana. Jinguji's the type who cares more for a woman's personality than her looks, unlike Tachibana. After all, Jinguji Tsukasa has it all. The looks, the length, the brains, the brawn, you want it, he's got it. So basically, he's that heartthrob your teenage niece is making sparkly fan cams for. However, instead of marveling at his popularity, he's left traumatized by how obsessive women can be. This is also why he'll only allow Tachibana to date a woman he approves of, and the odds of this happening are, well, zero to none. Yeah, like Jinguji would let go of Tachibana. He thinks about how he's always been more comfortable around men, and how there's no way that he's going to let a woman take Tachibana away when he alone is the very oasis of his heart. Then there's Tachibana Hinata, aka the average king. Everything about him from his personality to his height and to his age protagonist haircut is, well, average. He's already accepted the painful fact that as long as Jinguji is around, he will never get a girl. Because each one he falls for ends up simping for the other guy. This is why he's always bringing him to mixers, so his friend can get married ASAP. Although, Tachibana is suspicious that Jinguji is in love with him. The mixer ends up with a drunk Tachibana laying face flat on the park grounds. He drools as he mutters that he wishes to be a woman. If he's always going to feel this inferior and miserable, then he'd rather be a woman so hot and beautiful that she couldn't possibly exist in this world. He wants to have the kind of beauty that no sound person will ever look away from. He even mentions the exact looks he wants. Childlike, but still sharp, and the petite type with short blonde hair. Hearing all this nonsensical yapping has Jinguji grabbing Tachibana's head, pointing out that that's the reason why he can't get a woman. Out of curiosity, Tachibana asks what kind of girl Jinguji is interested in, but his friend doesn't know either. His concern right now is getting him home. This irks Tachibana, who calls Jinguji despicable for always being the one who takes care of him. But for Jinguji, he could only stare at his best friend falling asleep. And he sighs, as he says Tachibana is the only one who would spend time with a despicable person like him. Now that we've seen these two dudes being bros, Let's give it up for the goddess of love and beauty! She appears out of nowhere, of course, jadedly asking if Tachibana's dead. For once, the ever-so-calm Jinguji is shocked to see, as he exclaims, A half-naked LED woman! So the annoyed goddess snaps that it's a halo. She focuses on Tachibana, taking note of his very alive and breathing body. But that's no problem. If he's still alive, the goddess announces, then all she has to do is kill him. Her body glows as her bow and arrow of pouring hearts aim at Tachibana. And without a shred of hesitation, Jinguji instantly jumps to his best friend's aid before everything goes pitch black. Later, Jinguji wakes up in the middle of a forest, instantly looking for Tachibana. He sees his friend beside him, still sound asleep and unharmed. But while he's trying to recall what happened before this, Tachibana's body suddenly starts morphing. Lo and behold, a woman appears before Jinguji. Clad in Tachibana's clothes, the drunk lady wakes up sporting a hangover. Yup, the kitty-looking woman from the beginning of the recap is, in fact, the drunk and loveless man, Tachibana. For the first few moments, Jinguji's practically bolted in place as he stares at the woman. His brain keeps buffering as he still doesn't realize that he's staring at Tachibana in his, I mean, um, her, the, uh, face. There you go. Confused with Jinguji's reaction, Tachibana starts to argue with him. After all, forgetting your best friend's face is pretty harsh. Jinguji pointedly tells him that he only has one best friend. He then takes out a mirror to show Tachibana his reflection. Being the simpleton that he is, Tachibana comments on how cute the woman is. And it takes him three seconds to realize the woman is indeed him. Shocked and exasperated, he starts despairing over the stuff he shouldn't have up top and the goods that he's missing down below. Here lies the grave of Tachibana's manhood. 
missed by no woman, ever. Now that Tachibana's a she, Jinguji starts vomiting fairy dust as he reels in over how sickening this whole thing is. It appears that Tachibana turned into a girl and is talking to me. It's sickening, he says. Strangely enough, the goddess starts to giggle as she witnesses the duo bickering. She boasts of her creation and asks Tachibana if she likes becoming the embodiment of her desires. In turn, Tachibana blurts out that there's an exhibitionist in front of them. After snapping that the both of them are disrespectful, the goddess explains that she brought them into this world as heroes and granted him his wish. Apparently, these two are the only ones who can save this world from total annihilation. They must defeat the demon lord to be granted any wish they desire. Excited about the goddess's plans, Tachibana jumps in joy. Well, Jinguji realizes the cons of this game. He calls it a scam, especially since they never wanted to be heroes in the first place. He immediately instructs the Tachibana-like woman, as he puts it, not to get involved with the goddess as she's giving him the heebie-jeebies. His words make the goddess realize that Jinguji's memories are still intact and that his intuition might be a problem for her. And they are. Jinguji realizes that it's the goddess who turned Tachibana into a woman, stealing his oasis from him. He's beyond upset that he's literally crying, and he wails that he's going to die without his oasis. Jinguji then threatens the goddess, claiming that they're not cooperating unless she turns Tachibana back to normal. But all the incessant finger-pointing and ordering only sap her patience. The goddess notes their rudeness and audacity. How dare they give her orders? And so they forced her hand. And now they'll just have to learn the hard way. The goddess angrily tells them that she'll use the duo for some kind of amusement casting a curse that'll make them want to save this world. Light radiates as she tells them that they must save the world if they wish for Tachibana to turn back. And her word in this world is the law. The weather clears, and the goddess disappears. Jinguji looks at a mulling Tachibana, but all he can see are sparkles and cuteness overload. Seeing her best friend's blushing state, Tachibana asks if Jinguji's mesmerized by her. Looking up to a confused and dazed Jinguji, Tachibana could only see sparkles surrounding Jinguji. Tachibana is now left blushing as she finds Jinguji handsome. Jinguji cannot help but wonder what this strange feeling is. Why is his heart beating so fast? The male Tachibana always knew Jinguji had the looks. But now that he's a she, everything about Jinguji is on steroids. Those piercing eyes and perfect hair, his solid and perfect body. And oh how ideally 180 centimeters he is! Jinguji also realizes how Tachibana's petite body and dignified, intelligent blue eyes are attractive to him. Not to mention her fair skin and glorious blonde hair. Tachibana's whole presence just draws him in. So apparently the goddess cast the nastiest curse there is. Love. Now the two must withstand the law of attraction to protect their friendship. At this moment, their hearts were as one. They must defeat the demon lord before falling in love with each other. As they start trekking through the forest, Tachibana's weaker endurance makes itself apparent. She gets tired from less than an hour of hiking. Jinguji encourages her to focus on the goal, but Tachibana is on the verge of surrendering. She even defends herself by mentioning her skinny legs, petite body, and loosely fit shoes. Jinguji can't help but blush as he scolds her for indecently showing her legs. She suggests going down the mountain instead, but he interjects saying that being at the top would give them a full view of the area. It's the wisest choice because they know nothing of this world yet. Plus, a huge cross-like shadow is cast from the mountain too. When Tachibana asks if it's safe for them to drink from the river, Jinguji replies that they'll only consider it if the situation becomes critical. Changing the subject, Jinguji's still hurting over Tachibana's womanhood. He liked her better as a guy because, again, he's always been more comfortable around men than women. This dislike is way too focused, Tachibana says, before muttering about how unforgivably savage the goddess is for upping and leave them clueless. And if only Tachibana could take her eyes off Jinguji's extraordinarily handsome masculinity. Wait, snap out of it, Tachibana. She thinks that the curse is only affecting her, but she couldn't be more wrong. Jinguji's on edge too. After some thinking, Tachibana realizes the goddess never mentioned what the curse was. So there's a possibility that their attraction is natural and independent of the goddess's intervention. She's scared of asking Jinguji though, since he might get the wrong idea and the possible implications this might have on their friendship are just too dire. So instead, Tachibana tries to go Jinguji's true feelings for her, citing how he must be into women like her. But she is only met with a cold reply from him, 
He's never praised a woman's appearance. Not in the 25 years they've been friends. So why would he start now? And straight to Tachibana's heart, he says, <laughs> You're as bird-brained and uncomprehending as ever. Jinguji 1, Tachibana 0. Or so it would seem. In Jinguji's mind, he's cosmically thankful for Tachibana's naivety. If only the woman could see and hear Jinguji's screamo singing heart right now. He's even having difficulty looking at her, afraid of what he could do given his intense desires. However, Jinguji is a gentleman. He has a pride to protect, and thus he shan't lose to Tachibana's cuteness. He will prove to the goddess how immutable their friendship is. Tachibana will be a man again, and everything will be as it was. Meanwhile, a tired Tachibana is disappointed as she doesn't have evidence to prove Jinguji does find her cute. Not letting the whole thing go, she concocts another plan to make him see how cute she can be. Cheeky cheeky! She purposely throws herself to the ground and then seductively sits up as she apologizes, showing Jinguji such a cute and alluring pose while telling him that she can't walk anymore. This adorable feminine gesture known as the upward glance should be enough to catch the stubborn Jinguji's eye. But while this may seem like a win for Tachibana, she can feel his ego as an adult man take a blow from this. But she's too invested to let her embarrassment rule over and she's confident that this will work. Well, your move, Jinguji. Alas, the opposite occurs when Jinguji offers her his hand. Oh, how the tables have turned. Now, this is just Jinguji's attempt to counter Tachibana's overwhelming cuteness. The offer is a bluff, but if she takes this offer, she will be pressed intimately against him. What a conundrum. Suddenly, a wild beast appears out of the bushes. Tachibana jumps straight into Jinguji's arms as they run straight <coughs> for the hills. Excuse me. But at observation, Tachibana finds the beast cute. Not until its face opens up, revealing the monster it truly is. And of course, this beast yields a beaming power, aiming it towards them. Now they're running and dodging blasts. Awesome. In this life and death situation, Jinguji has ample time to ask Tachibana not to hold on so tightly as he can feel her woman-like features pressed against them. Tachibana apologizes, saying he'll have to bear with her for now. Saying this has Jinguji recognizing how dangerous it would have been if Tachibana were alone. He gives her a comforting smile and orders her to hold on tightly. Carrying Tachibana like this makes Jinguji feel her softness and her face is only inches away. Jinguji's reasoning is having a hard time winning against Tachibana's squishiness. Her warmth and pleasant smell invade his thoughts, making him miss a step and fall off a cliff's edge. Tachibana alerts Jinguji to flee. However, it dawns upon him that he's never backed down. So why start now? So Jinguji decides to face this monster head on. Tachibana scolds him for his idiocy, but that charming smile and thoughtful reassurance made his heart go, Doki doki, doki doki, doki doki. As the monster draws in for the kill, Jinguji throws a punch at its chest. Shockingly, his punch is that strong. It goes through the monster. And in some dark humored way, the creature does look cute as it barfs up blood, collapsing in the process. Tachibana concludes that this is just some isekai cliche where the heroes become OP. Jinguji has always been naturally athletic, so his innate ability has only been enhanced. And without warning, the monster suddenly implodes. Jinguji swiftly shields his friend from it, but comes out unscathed. With the monster defeated, he levels up to 70, while Tachibana is shocked that she is only at level 1. Noticing the skills button, Tachibana feels like she will learn the many cheat level skills she has. But she's ultimately disappointed upon knowing her most important skill include unparalleled beauty and troublemaker. Later, Tachibana realizes her beauty is supposed to be a favor from the goddess. If only they didn't call her an exhibitionist. Or, well, disrespect her. Tachibana is set on apologizing to her the next time they see each other, with Jinguji begrudgingly agreeing. Jinguji then wonders if the goddess gave him anything as well. Not like he had an ideal form in mind besides himself, Tachibana thinks he might have gotten practical skills instead. Checking his skills panel, they immediately take notice of Gate to Paradise. Turns out, this skill enables Jinguji to open a door leading to Tachibana's room with just a snap of his fingers. Going in, Tachibana is overly surprised by the room. Even her weekly accumulated trash is detailed. He did say all he wanted was to see the drunk Tachibana back at his place. The goddess sure has a weird way of granting wishes. The two heat up and enjoy some food, noting how the room has electricity and water. Although the TV isn't working and the windows remain closed, it's pretty useful for the duo. 
Jinguji can't help but stare at Tachibana's hamster-like cheeks when she eats that big bite of pasta. Cute, if you ask me. As Jinguji relaxes in the comfort of having food for a while, Tachibana breaks the bad news for him. The food they're gobbling happens to be the last of it. In a fit of rage, Jinguji tries to snatch Tachibana's food, yelling about how Tachibana thoughtlessly ate the one serving she had. There is no food in his place. Tachibana says she rarely eats at home anyway. Besides, she knows that Jinguji would save her if an earthquake happens. Then they realize that they're kind of having a lover's spat, and it makes Tachibana blush that Jinguji is so overprotective of her. He just responds by saying that she should hurry up and become independent. Jinguji devises their worst-case scenario to break down the monster's meat from earlier. Then Jinguji advises they still have to go scan the perimeter and secure food. But instead of hiking up the mountains, they'll explore a nearby settlement. He happens to spot smoke nearby. As the two make it to the village, they're in awe of the view, something you won't encounter in modern-day Japan. Tachibana appears to be worried though. Will she be okay dressed in girl clothes? Now that she's thought about it, Tachibana sulks as she complains about Jinguji's coldness towards her. But the truth of the matter is, Jinguji can't get her out of his mind, nor can he even look at her because of what she's wearing. He immediately informs her they should look for new and more appropriate clothes ASAP. Arriving at the village, Tachibana rehearses her alibi with Jinguji. She'll act as a wealthy young lady from a remote region who travels with an attendant. She'll eventually gain information about this world. Sounds like a solid plan. With her beauty and communication skills, Tachibana's unstoppable. As Tachibana enters the village premises, the game panel suddenly appears, informing Jinguji of how unparalleled beauty works. With this, Tachibana's negotiation skills with the opposite gender would prove favorable, and her likability quotient would increase more easily. Well, it would have turned out great if it weren't for the black smoke coming from the center of the village, and villagers running away screaming, Bandits! Great, they're doomed. The game panel appears once more. Tachibana has unlocked another skill, Troublemaker. Jinguji immediately goes running after her. However, Tachibana just thinks there's a festival, completely oblivious of the situation. A villager shoves her to the ground, leaving her at the mercy of a bandit. Unaware of the situation, she apologizes to him. And this is when her unparalleled beauty skill strikes. The bandit is so smitten by her, he immediately proposes. He even vows to quit his evil ways, all for Tachibana and his dream of having a family with her. Without waiting for her response, he takes her in his arms. Coincidentally, the bandit's brother approaches them. And you guessed it, one look at Tachibana and he's ready to up and leave thieving if she marries him and have his eight children. Tachibana now knows the game panel meant with unparalleled beauty. Another bandit arrives and, yup, falls for Tachibana. He's immediately hit with an axe to his head as one of the brothers ruins his supposed proposal. As more bandits arrive, more have fallen prey to Tachibana's unparalleled beauty. And so they fight like they're battling for God, gold, or glory. Indeed, this is the true power of womanhood. Is this another Trojan War in the making? If only such skill would work on Jinguji too. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.